Well, thank you everyone for joining us for this lovely session. I think uh, we've had a day where we've learned a lot about our health and our healthcare sector in, in general. And the flow of knowledge will continue since this uh, panel is uh, is on a topic, uh, uh, is on a disease that we've been facing since uh, last 75, 70 years. And uh, we're still, uh, it's uh, the disease is still a big challenge for us. Now, with the topic that we are discussing over here is uh, how far we are from eliminating TB by 2025. Now, tuberculosis in India uh, takes half a million deaths every year. And uh, we are taking the world's burden. It's 20, over 25% of tuberculosis cases, estimated tuberculosis cases of the world are present in India. So that it's it is in itself is a very big challenge if we see. Now, without further ado, I want to address my first question uh, to Dr. Behera. Dr. Behera, currently, how do you think? Uh, what do you think about the current prevalence of tuberculosis in India, and how do you think we are fighting it? So thank you and a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but tuberculosis is, a, as you have very rightly said, we had the highest number of tuberculosis in the world, about 26% uh, of the world burden of tuberculosis is in India. And if I convert it into the numbers every year, we detect uh, roughly around 26 lakhs cases of tuberculosis new cases. Similarly, the drug resistant TB, which is again uh, another deterrent for our uh, TB control. Again, we have uh, the highest number. It is roughly 1,24,000 cases of drug resistant TB in India. The point is, uh, you know, what are we doing for it? You see, uh, you know, earlier on from uh, 62 onwards, we have got a national TB control program, which we call as the NPCP. But unfortunately, it was not that well organized. Then it was in a haphazard way. Then since 1992, we revised our strategy and we called it Revised National TB Control Program or RNPCP. And since 21, we named it TB Elimination Program or NTEP, National TB Elimination Program, uh, which we are going to talk about the NTB strategy. Uh, a lot has been done since then. The basic fact was uh, the a political commitment and then there are various components getting the newer diagnostics, newer drugs. And we have a very well organized and structured program for this, whether we call it RNTCP or NTEP. But the question, and, and you know, the uh, TB control program, it is the Indian TB control program. It is the fastest and the largest, you know, public health program in the world today. That is, uh, I think, one thing we must remember. But the question is, the problem is uh, so enormous. That's why the lies the problem. We have done so much and so many things in various fields. I'm not going to describe that one by one. But in broad, as I told you, as regards the diagnosis, the notification to the NICA, then the giving drugs, free drugs, free diagnostics, giving people the uh, monetary help so that they can have good nutrition. So all these things are being done, so lots of lives have been saved. And then the entire world, when it was decided, okay, we should end TB uh, by 2035 or 2030. So our Honorable Prime Minister said, why not to do it a little earlier? So he announced that it should be by 2025. That there lies the challenge and the, I should say, there lies the problem. The problem here we have to understand TB is just not, uh, uh, as I understand, it's just not that mycobacterium tuberculosis goes to the lungs and you get TB and you do the sputum test and the AFB is positive or do a chest x-ray and then you give them four drugs, INH, Rifampicin, Rifampicin, it's just not that. It, the disease itself goes much beyond that. So what way? Because, you know, it has got a deeper socio 
political, economic issues associated with TB. You know, we have got a huge, huge burden of reservoir of TB infection. About 30% of our population, we are all infected, meaning thereby we are having got the potential, then bursting it into the active disease when we get a chance, when the body gets a chance or the microbacteria gets a chance. This is number one. And number two is the various factors they are associated with TB, they are quite, you know, widely prevalent in our uh, country. Apart from this infection, which I told you, you know, the malnutrition, overcrowding, slums, then the immunological issues, diabetes, which I think you heard uh, just before this session. Diabetes, we are uh, the diabetic capital of the world. And then, you know, the number you have already heard that. There are various immunosuppressive diseases. Fortunately, HIV has been controlled to a larger extent. It is not only our country, uh, in many other countries, but then when we need to have control the or the, the HIV is not a greater problem. Let me put it that way. I'm not telling it is not a problem. The other immunosuppressive things are coming up. Other immunosuppressive diseases, use of immunosuppressive drugs that includes cancer, that includes, you know, the organ transplantation. So many, many, many factors that are responsible for occupation, you know, the various types of occupation, the overcrowding, as I have told you. So it has got a different type of uh, dimension to the TB control that has added. So uh, as you said, the current prevalence and you did the, uh, you know, remember the problem, I should say TB had been a neglected disease. Let me put, uh, throw some light on that. You know, you had many advances taking place in many fields of uh, medicine, cardiology, diabetes, cancer, so on and so forth. Do you, can you believe that the last drug, when the last drug of TB was discovered, anybody had worked on the TB drugs? That was 50 years back. Nothing happened beyond the late 70s till about 2012 or 13, when it was realized and work started and we got two or three new drugs. That means for the about 30 years, 50 years, nothing, nobody worked on TB, I do not know whether we thought. So that is what was the reality about TB. Now coming to the uh, the program in our country, yes, the, the program is very well running, very well. But unfortunately, the problem as I see, it actually works through the our existing healthcare system. It, it, it works through the various states as a different health care system. If state A has got a good health care delivery system, then that state does well. If state Y has got a poor or inadequate or whatever you may call it, then the delivery of the health care system or the TV control program is affected that way. I think there is a dissimilarity in various states that as I immediately I could see. Then again, very well you heard in the previous session, it is just having the knowledge or science is not good enough. It is most important to know that how that knowledge or science is being, you know, utilized for the mass or for the population or the person on the street. I think that is what is one issue which we should ponder over the India as a country or as a country, we should understand that. Just understanding, we have done a lot of improvements. You see, diagnosing TB, I just give one example. Say, for example, gene export or true not. You know, technically speaking, within 110 minutes, that means less than two hours, we should get a diagnosis of TB. Do this put up examination, within 110 minutes, you get, yes, it is a positive or negative. But actually, you see, go to the field, go to the hospital, what you get, not on an average, it takes one week to 10 days to get that report. So why that is happening? So I think that uh, we need to ponder. So, so these are some of the issues that I will to start with. I will tell you the prevalence. You asked me, again, uh, the situation is not very good. We are at the first national uh, prevalence survey somewhere in 58, 1958. So then after 60 years, just... Uh, this year, we got our uh, next national prevalence, uh, sub prevalence uh, survey. Although in between, we had got various sub-national surveys. But then this is again very alarming. Uh, the figures are very 
alarming they are not very good despite our program having working for many years and is working in a very efficient way but so see you can see on an average uh, roughly it is 316 with uh, tb cases for 1 lakh population and then the, the again there is a variation you see delhi is having the highest that is about 700 plus per lakh population and then kerala and gujarat having the lowest number so this is roughly speaking about the prevalence so the things are again not uh, very good so n tb yes the honorable prime minister has given a push everybody working very hard but uh, in to my mind because of the issues although uh, it may be 225 we just uh, two years three years uh, left we may not be able to achieve that but we will make a significant progress that will be my short answer thank you uh, thank you uh, thank you dr bera uh, you have highlighted a key point that that we have been there in the policies we've been there with the free trials we've been there in some states uh, with the delivery system as well but the figures you have highlighted that you know the first study uh, which happened in 1958 uh, it came out in an extent that four people per thousand population uh, that was the pre- prevalence of tb at that time in 1958 the recent study which happened in 2021 uh, that uh, it said that over three people per thousand population are still suffering from tb in india so that tells you that uh, uh, in terms of prevalence how far we have come it's it's really less now to uh, uh, get to my uh, next question uh, i want to bring in uh, dr Mah- uh, ms bhatia into conversation uh, what do you think is the role of industry in managing and controlling tb this uh, matter thank you and good evening to all now as dr pera already mentioned about the various challenges which uh, this program is already facing and one such challenge is the development of infrastructure you know as the industry we can play a significant role in terms of new drug testing which really help to shorten the duration of the treatment create more uh, safe and effective way of giving the treatments and also to ensure that access to those treatments happen across all the community who actually need those drugs that is the first part second even if you have the access of these drugs available the access of these infrastructure available how technology is nowadays plays a role in terms of early detection one of the biggest challenge even in tuberculosis and communicable diseases are how can you do early detection which will help you to detect early and then treat them and prevent the spread of this disease so as a industry we always look for partnership and association with 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 the like minded people to create that sort of awareness and use various technology based approaches various digital tools based approaches which will help us to not only create build or access or create a sort of implementation model it will be helpful for the community to get all this right uh, i want to bring this question uh, to mr krishna mohanty as well so how do you think the industry can help in uh, controlling and managing the disease what is the role it plays see the uh, <clears throat> thing you talking about <laughs> see the way the veracity of the problem has been defined the prevalence and the especially the disease burden as a country we carry it is not possible just to make this happen within. certainly the industry has to play a very very important role and ajay mentioned about you know, how drug discovery and the new drugs which has come which plays a role and diagnostic is another area where it has become very expensive today especially for tb the amount of disease burden we have is a very very large economical problem for us to make this 2025 goal one is we have a huge issue of capacity to diagnose and treat so we have a huge capacity second dr mentioned about the disparity in the delivery capacity so the consistent delivery capability is also the second and 
The third issue, which is what is that we will do long term so that we need to prepare accommodation, like from 1950 to 1970, 1980. Always we know TP is one of our biggest problems. And you also mentioned we have some reason we have not addressed. So now we need to look at what is 2025 we achieve or when we eliminate, whatever the date it is. But as Honorable Prime Minister said in 2025, but beyond 2025, what we need. So it is generally it is an industry has to play a very, very important role. In the last 50 years, uh, private industries coming into TV and effectively contributing is and using this 2025 as a goal with the Prime Minister program, I feel this is the time for industry to step in. And more or less, if you look at the last 30, 40 years in the TV program, it is the international companies which is coming into India, either in the drug space or in the diagnostic space, for the supporting. But it is time for, when you say industry, you also need to quote that to India's problem, Indian industry has to So a lot of Indian industries has to step in to really address. And I'll go a little later on some of this final issue. Thank you, uh, Mr. Krishnamurti. Now, coming to my next question and addressing the elephant in the room, to uh, how far we are um, from eliminating TB by 2025. Now, the UN has said that Worldwide, they are targeted to eliminate TB by 2030, but we have lasted to do by five years earlier than that. So, uh, Dr. Vera, I want to address this to you. How far we really are from the target? And if we work with PR to achieve that, what will be the imperatives that will take us there? Uh, so, as uh, I have hinted, you know, the uh, you can still see the, I gave you, I put it you the figure. Then the uh, still we are getting so many cases of uh, TB in the community. Uh, of course, uh, if we go by what do we first thing, what do we mean by ending TB? Actually, what is the ending TB by 2025? So in comparison to the various figures that was in 2015, and then in comparison to that, what should happen? That means we have to reduce the incidence by you know 90%. So I think you make the calculation and you make your own conclusion. So I am not going to tell you openly yes or no, but I, that therefore I made a very categorical statement that yes, it is a, we will be nearer to that, but we may not achieve that figure. Let us be very practical about that. And the number two was the reducing the TB deaths, the people dying because of this. That was the second uh, goal of this uh, NTB strategy. So that to a greater extent, say for example, the people, the uh, uh, how many people are dying per lakh, and then it has, it has come down to a greater extent, but again, not to the figure that uh, is expected to be done in comparison to what was in 2015. And the third thing was reducing the catastrophic cost by the patient and his or her family because of TB. Maybe the last one we have got, uh, achieved to some extent, but still I'll say a lot of people still go to the uh, to seek healthcare where they have to spend a lot of money. Uh, earlier I was working in a government sector and now I'm working in a, in a you know private sector. So in the private sector, still many people go to the private sector. Obviously they go there. The Although there are facilities for free drug, free diagnosis, free everything, but because of some things, then they, why they don't want to go to their, you know, to their uh, government hospital nearby? Why they still want to no, go to the uh, to the private hospital? Because obviously there is something lacking in our government hospitals. But then if, if the patient gets that type of facility, if he is getting in a private hospital, separately, he comes, he is seen in a time, he gets his diagnosis within time. So I think that we need to build up. Uh, and in nutshell, I will tell you because we need to work on these issues rather than just telling or announcing that we give free drugs or we do the free tests. So that is possibly not enough. So really it has to be worked out that way. 
and then regarding the the industry and then the so called uh, public private uh, cooperation let the lot uh, lot a uh, deal a lot of things have been done and then the private sector is coming forward the industry is coming forward to help the program uh, but i think still there is a lot of uh, lacking say for example even you will be surprised to know that again i am not trying to criticize anybody it's not a fact that is not the purpose the question is how do we have to improve the amount of uh, funding which is given even in the under the government set up they give a lot of money but the the extent of utilization is not 100% why it should not if you give me 100 rupees why can't i spend it i am not able to spend that 100 rupees and then very small figure that is of course three years back four years back i know the the utilization percentage was as low as 30 percent in some states in the other i have 100 euro 105 percent some people spend very efficiently some people don't spend even the money say for example the the human resource the human resource is already identified okay for this this number of healthcare workers are required that is not most of the time either the post are on field the post the people are not available because of whatever reason i am not going into that detail so in not sell i had hinted in my opening remark that the healthcare delivery system therefore is not very efficient you don't get doctors you don't get technician you will not be nurses so there are some issues about it. so i think our delivery system is to be very efficient somebody is to be looking at it. yes there is a lot of uh, development by the industry they as i told you they have developed new drugs now the duration of therapy has come down from 18 months to years 3 30 months to now it is as low as 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 short as uh, six months we get in the a drug resistance mdr multi-drug resistant tb can be treated very efficiently and with the uh, with better result with the treatment duration in the six months they have come things have come now with the BPAL regime. So these things are there. But on the other hand, it is not the chief to where it should be. It's not the that I should say. Uh, Mr. Krishnamurti, I want you to come into the conversation again. And uh, in here, uh, Dr. Mera mentioned about public private partnerships. How much do you think these are essential going forward in controlling and managing TB? I, I think uh, you need, I will combine your previous question, how far we are in 2025 and what year. See, as a country, when I look at the current Stop TB program or Eliminating TB program, we got the methodology right. It took some time and COVID also derailed us. But I feel all the components, what is required to be done in a very aggressive manner, that we got the methodology right. So, Let's take first the diagnosis of a TB right now. While the disease burden is predicted very high and prevalence rate is very, very high. That's what we see. But what we don't know, we don't know. Right? It's all real prediction. So certainly let us make an assumption, the prevalence more than what we really know. Now that means the diagnosis comes very, very important. So diagnosis, I want to divide the diagnosis into two parts. It, because the confirmatory test today available, which is uh, complicated, that is, it takes time. You mentioned sometimes it takes one week, but it can be done in two hours' time. And at the same time, the screening methodology also has evolved. The recently last one, one and a half years, if you look at it, a little more than that, the digital X ray framework has come into a real model to diagnosis, at least screen better. So in the digital X-ray space, I see into about three different methods we need to quickly adopt. We are ready theoretically. We know how to do it, but we need to do it nationwide. One is like you know handheld X-ray time with a very uh, moderate radiation and easy to operate. And second is portable digital X-ray where you can port it through close to the care point of care or close to the patient through a mobile van. And the third is stationary X-ray but it should be necessarily digital. The digital gives us an advantage that immediately available X-ray number one. Second, eliminate a lot of manual intervention to really screen. So there are a lot of automated tools have come. 
and i think government of india is also approved few of them and worldwide it is a very mature model where a fast track screening happen so all this time it was not happen so this methodology is in place we need to find out how do we fast track once you do the screening of the diagnosis perspective while whatever the method world we had but to create really a good throughput to get it we have standardized to do a molecular based test and either a closed system or open system. but we might need to use this opportunity during covid we kind of established large molecular lab large amount of molecular lab in the country in government setup itself there are about 3000 laboratories are there in the board 7000 laboratories are there where we have created a strong molecular diagnostics capability and with technicians and but not necessarily to do a tb diagnosis so creating to leveraging these laboratories to a molecular diagnostic test on a open method can give us some capacity very quickly because it's readily available and we are used to it we're still not out of covid the infrastructure in place people are in place we should quickly level it and then we have the closed system diagnosis uh, we have got few companies but predominantly the capacity and the economics is the challenge so we need to find a solution to how large scale capacity we can create on the closed system diagnosis for contamination but screening to diagnosis has to happen in unison and fully supported through a monitoring and digital platform again which we proved during again in covid icmr did a big a fantastic job not even one test was missed everybody so if we put a will together to create a platform it is possible but for some reason it was not fully successful in tb yet so we need to make that rigor ready to ensure the tracking monitoring mechanism at the very early stage from the screening stage is integrated then moves into therapeutic course we have a lot of new drugs coming in then we are using some of the old drugs and availability of drugs government is subsidizing or giving free all of this are there now here compliance and governance plays a very important since it is not a one time it is more or less tb is like a lifestyle disease now 6 months to 1 year or 1 and a half year somebody has to be monitor and track so a overall command center based continuously monitoring patient it see today the culturally in health system one big problem we have always it is patient driven somebody is sick they come then we identify as a team whereas the way we are looking at 2025 or whatever the time frame it should be more proactive it should be system driven rather than patient the health systems and health delivery authorities state they need to track now by putting this together we can achieve this target very effectively maybe one or two years later or we will achieve it to this but that is possible then i want to take it the two other items which you need to really which is not been in the discussion or it is not getting priority see tb is a very old disease and our scientific community if they put their things together what are the mechanism we can bring preventive therapeutic in tb is a very important point because it's not going to be over by 2025 2028 it is going to continuously linger around so the preventive therapeutic is an area where we need to trigger a lot of research in and of course the final brahmastra in this is the vaccination as a country as a group the kind of uh, prevalence we have and the effective tb vaccination should be on our cards and where we need to put our might so this is where i will stop to give you an all of this possible not just uh, by having a government here it can be lot of ppp model which we are already doing i think as a country we are mastered uh, managing the quality of a ppp model economics and how the private partner can be profitable as a country pretty much we have mastered that and just we need to bring in the rigor to get the holistic approach especially you uh, highlighted a great point there that we have to rigorously do the screening and uh, from screening to diagnosis to treatment to therapeutics we it has to have a unanimous and a collaborative approach if i may uh mr bhatia i want this question to be addressed to you too uh, how do you think collaborative approach and public private partnership is going to be an essential going forward you know continuing what uh, mr krishnamurthy mentioned from 
and the detection point of view, you know, see the collaboration starts even from before that in order to create awareness. How how are you utilizing various community-based approaches so that the awareness around and the detection should happen? And how you use the technology in going forward to detect and um, some of the few initiatives which we have taken in our organization is in terms of artificial intelligence based software which will be able to detect and the detect TB very early. And by detecting early TB, you could be able to treat them fast. At the same time, there are now tools available which will also help you to create a sort of a symptom based course. And when you get those technology based symptom based course, you could be able to also stratify the risk factor and also ensure that uh, if there is a risk factor, then you can uh, screen them early and also treat them early. That's the second. The third important factor, which is very, very important in, in managing the collaborations, is also uh, in terms of prevention. So you can treat with drugs. You can detect early, but if you cannot prevent the spread of the disease, this will also will not moving towards the goal of eliminating TB from this country. Uh, Dr. Vera already mentioned about 30% of our population have related TB. What can we do to ensure that that awareness and education at the community level happens so that we could be able to reach out to the masses and educate them for eliminating? Uh, we can have a lot of collaborations with the community-based leaders. We can create advocacy around those uh, uh, district level or state levels uh, regarding TB advocates, uh, TB champions, so that we can create examples to the community and say that there is a bridge between the program and the community. And whatever the gaps and challenges which are which are seen by the patients on the ground can be addressed to those advocates as well as to those TB channels. Uh, you mentioned a very valid point that the awareness. Uh, I think it's an issue because uh, Dr. Vera also mentioned in the start of the conversation that TB has gone uh, in the back room and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not in the front. So uh, my next question is on awareness, Dr. Vera. Uh, do you think there is still less awareness uh, that uh, that is needed to eradicate the disease? And uh, what do you think should be done to increase the awareness of farming? You see, one of the components of our uh, TV control program is the IEC. The, you know, uh, but some IEC are very right and let me give that the awareness program is the, uh, needs to be more aggressive. Maybe sometimes uh, you can see the advertisement by Amitabh Sanji. Sometimes he speaks about TB. But I think the similar such things needs to bring about the awareness. They're not very rightly told about the screening part. We have but now the who are to be screened and that part is already identified. I told you about certain at the beginning of the session, I told you which are the you know, vulnerable population who has to be, so they are the targets. So our uh, early diagnosis, as a part of early diagnosis earlier, it used to be passive case finding, means somebody is having cough, he goes to the healthcare system. So now the program is trying to find the active case finding, then it becomes the intensive case finding, and now it is the targeted case finding, so that the number of cases are detected, and they are reported to our care system. So that is the, the, and then accordingly the patient is treated and they traced and they complete the treatment. And then at the end, I think very rightly, uh, you pointed out about the vaccine. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, this work is being done by the ICMR. You see the TB Research Consortium of the ICMR is already undertaking a vaccine trial. It will be one of the world's uh, biggest uh, vaccine trial. It is already on the third year. So we have to wait uh, one more year because these vaccine trials uh, need uh, and there are 12,000 uh, subjects are there being followed up very meticulously. So I think while uh, we are discussing here already, the other team is monitoring how it is done at different places. So I think it is going on in different ways. The country is doing and I think the vaccine again is the 
uh, created very good thing is done by the indian pharma company so that is being tried so i hope something will come out so at this juncture it is not uh, i'll not try to reveal although i know some of it but it is not uh, uh, ideal to speak out something about the results but i think we may get something good so all these things are going on but what uh, i think uh, we need to emphasize it all of us for the society as a whole it should be social movement it's not uh, just between the just it is a case for the tb patient or for the government or for the program or for the industry i think all of us should work together and it should be made a social movement maybe then that uh, will have better success let me put it that way. thank you uh, mr krishna would you like to add to that add to what uh, to the awareness yeah so i agree that an upper awareness should be a social movement but right now what is that from a common man perspective why is he is not able to think this is a big problem that's a question we need to answer see the common man when you say awareness what is that awareness you want to create you want to say that you no know, we have a big problem of tb in the country and is that is the one or what is the impact it is going to happen to him if he doesn't do and so those kind of messaging right now there are a lot of thought process has gone in but i think the communication aspect of it. so all the missionaries government missionaries and the private missionaries and the social movement has to be created from the individual citizen perspective because the individual citizen is not sick and mo- most of the tb is latent and he doesn't see it. so he doesn't know the veracity of it is not is not seeing we are thinking as a country at a macro level this is the impact we think but at a micro level as an individual level is the communication and which we did a fantastic job in hiv i think we need to do that similar one on thing uh, mr ajay would you like to add that you know i think the most of the point got addressed but still i feel in terms of now as a as a organization or as a corporate or even as a societies we all need to take a pledge we all need to take a pledge to create awareness uh yes maybe at the micro level it look like that it is not impacting us but at the same time in the movement start from individuals and when you start a movement like when you start working with corporates or business associates or with the ngos and take that pledge of creating awareness and take that pledge of also some of the very social uh, factors of tb which is like stigmatization or discrimination discrimination behavior i think if we can all start start talking about all those things this will have a impact on the long run and this will also have a impact of creating a earlier awareness and detection of both uh, also uh, one one uh, message that you would want to give out to the audience to how should they educate themselves about tv and how should they educate others about tv in uh, mr Be- uh, dr bera yes i think uh, uh, all of us should uh, know for ourselves and also we should spread the message that if you have got symptoms the warning symptoms of tv so i think you should go like say for example cough for the, the usual things if you have got cough for more than 2 weeks you have got blood in the sputum you are losing weight you are having no uh, you know you are having loss of appetite so this type of thing so these are the warning symptoms so you should get a test for it may be tb and also similar messages in the in your area in your village to the relatives so i think that will be one great step and once it is a, the diagnosis is available everywhere it is free so if it can be done then get the adequate treatment which is equally efficacious and it will be totally cured otherwise i think one very important point which is no it is told it is very important how and what will happen if you don't uh, get treated you don't get diagnosed i think that message also is equally important yeah we have to change the tone of awareness uh, from uh, a macro level we have to individualize the problem uh, especially in the like so the if i if i want to spread tb message i don't want i cannot advise audience but i can 
So if I really want to communicate to my friend or a colleague the importance of TB, the way I would rather say is, I will tell him that why I don't have TB, how I determine that I don't have TB and how I'm protected for it. And I will start talking it, so which will automatically become contagious for people to follow. So that's the way I would rather say that first, if each and every individual, if they start thinking, do I have TB? Don't have. And how affirmative I can say. And if you're able to same communicate that how affirmative you are, you think that you don't have TB, then everybody will have that. That's a method I will not have. Um, yeah, see, for me, the message is very clear and simple. I think we all should become an advocate for creating more awareness. And also, within the awareness, the method, the message should be that you, by giving awareness, you also are saying that you're uh, you are also preventing the spreadability of the disease to others. This is if we give these two strong messages, like you become an advocate, and at the same time you are also giving a message of preventing the spreading of this disease to others. I think we are moving in the right direction in terms of eliminating this disease from the future. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bhatia. Now we can open the floor uh, for questions. If that there are any, uh, we can kind uh, of uh, introduce yourselves and ask uh, the questions. Hi. So I wanted to know when a patient has TB and he's had his medication. Okay. Uh, now you can hear. Yeah. So if a patient has TB, he's had his course of medication and it's, he's supposedly cured, does he need to be monitored throughout or does he need to go in for monitoring again for the rest of his life or it's done at one time? No, I think, uh, Usually after the completion of treatment, we follow them up for about 18 months. After 6 months, 12 months and 18 months after completion of his treatment, whether this put on is again becoming positive or not. That's all. Not that you... Okay. And it, but it can recur. Yeah, yeah. It can recur. But by and large, it is not. If the treatment is complete. Right. Uh, thank you so much thank for you. the question. Uh, right. Uh, I think you're really good quality of okay, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm Rajiv Nath, uh, Forum for Data Private. My question is related to the uh, biggest issue of stigma. We've not been able to address the stigma issue of TV. So unless we address that, uh, I don't think we cannot really move forward in eliminating TV. And I think that's the biggest uh, psychological challenge, whether it's for employees or even in our homes. That's a great question, uh, Dr. Dehana. Uh, yes, I think the, uh, you know, many people come out, say, for example, I named a great man. So he himself tells him, I had TV. You know, I think that we hear in the television message. So that type of thing should come up. So that uh, you know the message goes. So he is not hiding. He did not hide it. So that way, I think we all should do that. And your point is very well taken, sir. That is a, one of the still the things. I people are not coming out of it. People are not uh, hesitant, but still a larger uh, number of uh, uh, patients are still they want to hide it. They think the stigma is always there. But I think with time, we all should as we are telling very clearly that all of us should come out uh, so that there is no stigma. Right. Thank you. I think uh, we have uh, deciphered a lot from uh, you know, what's coming up, vaccination uh, and your collaborative approach that is going to be essential from diagnosis, uh, from screening to diagnosis to treatment. And uh, we will make great strides in controlling TB by maybe not by 2025, maybe a year or two year after that. But if the imperatives are done right, uh, we will be able to do it. Now, again, I want to thank the panelists. And I have a question. Uh, it's a very positive time. I'll thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, I'm Dr. Pando from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, where I spent 45 years. I want to ask you, Dr. Behra, especially, 
the treatment schedule for TB is 12 months to 18 months. So the greatest challenge is compliance. I want to understand from you, what is the strategy you have used for compliance? Uh, yes, sir. The, fortunately, now the duration of therapy has uh, come down from 12 to 18 months to 6 months. Of course, for MDR-TB, it is still, you know, about 9 months to 11 months and in certain cases up to 18 months. So, for that, I think there is a, what the strategy was DOTS, that is direct absorb therapy. That means once the patient gets a, uh, the drug or the treatment, so he is regularly followed up by a dot provider or the, the, the dot provider may be from the dot center itself, from the government side or even the family or some friend becomes a dot provider. So that was the strategy. There are many electronic ways also, like say for example, and uh, what we call as dots 99 dots, meaning thereby the patient, the, there will be a telephone number once the then the strip is there will be a telephone number which is free. So there are many ways, sir. So I think that is being adopted that to so that the patient completes the therapy. But again, I, I understand what I am sure, sir, you know all these things, it is there. But your question is, is it being really implemented or not? So that part actually I will uh, not like to answer. Uh, I hope that answers your question, sir. Uh, I want to thank the panelists for being here and uh, the audience to be patient uh, for listening in to this conversation. Thank you.